<laughs> Back to sleep. Hey busy bees! May has come and gone and I have to say that it was probably one of the most challenging yet rewarding months of my life. It was the first month that I fully got to embrace being a mom and learning about how to be a mom and keeping my baby alive. So today I thought I would share with you my May survival kit. Everything that helped me get through the month, everything from the food I ate to the bone broth that I told you guys about on my vlog to like tips and stuff that helped me out with the baby. So if you guys wanna see more, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe below and we'll go ahead and get started with the first one, which is my favorite new drink. It's called the Spindrift. Like a lot of you guys, I used to be a die-hard LaCroix or LaCroix. How do you guys say it? Like Christian LaCroix, the um, designer, that's how I was corrected that it sounds like, but people say LaCroix, so either way, I used to be a die-hard LaCroix fan until I found this Spindrift at Costco and Trader Joe's. It was a complete life changer. Um, it really reminds me of like spa water. This Spindrift has real fruit juice in it. So there's lemon, there's raspberry lime that's really tasty too. But these are my favorite right here. We have blackberry, lemon, cucumber, and grapefruit. So yeah, there's like real fruit in it. So I just feel good drinking it. It has more of like a fruity flavor and it's not sweet at all so I really like this. You can find it at Costco or at Trader Joe's and uh, you guys should really try the blackberry one from Trader Joe's. It tastes like, it tastes like bubbly grape juice. I don't know, it's just really good. But grapefruit is also my other favorite where it's super refreshing. On days when I just need a little bit of a drink, we would mix this with some tequila or vodka, lime juice, and a little bit of simple syrup and you have like the most refreshing evening drink ever just uh, that got me through the day. <laughs> I love the sound of like opening a can like that. The thing about the grapefruit, this one compared to the La LaCroix Pomplamousse, I just feel like this has more of a real flavor. Even though LaCroix is really good, it still tastes kind of synthetic to me and it doesn't really taste like grapefruit. This, you can totally tell it has like a real grapefruit flavor. So I highly recommend it. Okay, so next up is what I've been enjoying every morning for breakfast is this Icelandic skier by Siggy's. The cool thing is, it looks like yogurt. I mean, it says strained whole milk yogurt, but I looked it up and Icelandic skier is very similar to Greek yogurt, but it's actually like strained whole milk or like cheese. The consistency is really, really thick, um, but it has all like the live active cultures in there. So it's really good for your belly. What I like to do with my Icelandic skier is turn it into kind of like a yogurt bowl. I'll add a nice scoop of granola and it has oats. So that really helps with um, breast milk production. And then I'll just add some berries in there just to make it a little bit healthier and add some freshness to it. And that here is my breakfast. All right guys, here is the consistency. It's super duper thick, exactly like Greek yogurt, but this is a mixed berry flavor. So yeah, let's give it a try. Mm. Also, what I like about the Icelandic skier versus Greek yogurt, especially the flavored ones, is that there's not as much sugar in it. Um, there's a lot more protein content in the skier versus Greek yogurt, so win-win for all. It's definitely not too sweet at all, and I think with the addition of the fruit, it's just perfect. Moving on to the next one. I eat a lot these days because I burn the calories so fast from breastfeeding and pumping. So my favorite snack lately has been an avocado toast with this amazing everything bagel seasoning that I also got at Trader Joe's. It has sea salt, garlic, and onion, and it really goes with everything. My favorite thing is to add it on avocado toast with like a runny egg, because I can finally eat a runny egg now, so I've been having that very often. But it just reminds me of the everything bagel, minus all the carbs from the bagel. Um, it's delicious. I've tried adding this to rice and just random stuff too and it goes really well. Also what's really good with this too is bread with some spreadable goat cheese, tomatoes, basil, and then a hint of this. Oh, perfect snack. 
So on my Wild Honeysuckle vlog channel, I told you guys about what I've been eating, um, which was the Miyakuk, which I promise I will get around to doing a video on that, probably on the Wild Honeysuckle channel, but I also told you guys about the bone broth that we constantly have on the stove 24-7. Guess what? It's on the stove right now! Bone broth is in there. So I thought I would show you guys how to make it finally. All I need are some femur bones and some soup bones. You can find this at Whole Foods. If you um, don't see it in the freezer section, just go ahead and ask the butcher and they always have like this giant bone, beef bones, that they'll go ahead and cut for you. That's exactly what I did. Um, so I will get the knuckle because that has a lot of collagen and that helps make that like gelatinous, brothy um, consistency which is so good for your skin. And then um, bones with marrow in there. So I'll just add a few to my pot. And then I also like to add some oxtail because it's a little bit meaty, it has a little bit of fat in there. And I will just boil it with some regular water for about 20 minutes to get rid of all the impurities. Then I will drain all that water out, wash the bones thoroughly, and then put it back into the pot, pour some filtered water all the way to the top, and then I'll just boil it on like low, medium, low heat for seven to eight hours, and that is my bone broth. Sometimes I'll have to refill it with water throughout because it tends to evaporate a little bit, but that's not a big deal. That just makes it a lot more concentrated, and that means that it's working. It's like absorbing all of the bone and nutrients and minerals in there. Sometimes I actually like to add some apple cider vinegar in there too because that also helps to release the nutrients, but um, Sometimes I remember to do it, sometimes I forget. So in this case, I forgot. So if you guys wanna release more nutrients, go ahead and add like two tablespoons or a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar to it. With these bones, it's like the bones that keep on giving. I will boil it down and then I'll finish all the broth and then I'll continue boiling, add more water, boil it for like the whole week until the bones kind of disintegrate. Not like disintegrate into the broth, Broth per se but you know how when you go to the beach and you find like old seashells or bones or just like random stuff that has been so disintegrated by the seawater that's exactly how you want your bones just like very holy nothing left in them but that means that I was able to absorb all of the nutrients from it get everything that I wanted out of it and I'll continue doing this for a week so yeah I hope you guys get lots and lots of good use out of your spoon broth. For those of you guys that always ask me where I got my pink pot, this is a Le Creuset and I got it from William Sonoma. It's like a three and a half quart pot and it's my favorite. <laughs> Next up are some teas and drinks that I've really been enjoying. I know this is aside from the spindrift, but because I'm breastfeeding, I always have to drink water, whether it's like sparkling water, regular water, or even tea, just liquid really, really helps. Um, so I really like this mother's milk tea. It has shatavari cardamom, and it reminds me kind of like chai, but not too spicy. It just has a really warm, herby taste to it that's really nice. And then what I also like to do is add some almond milk to it. I found this ginger turmeric almond milk blend and it tastes amazing. You would think that it has like kind of a weird medicinal taste but I love that it has a strong kick of the ginger flavor because it has like real cold pressed ginger in there not like ginger spice or powder or whatever it's the real deal um, and I just add it to my tea and it's really really warming I really love it for times where I don't want to drink coffee because sometimes I feel like coffee keeps her up so I've been kind of cutting it out so this is dual purpose and win-win for all Another tea that I like is this pink stork right here. Um, I just enjoy having it. It's like a nice change when I need another kind of tea that helps me produce milk. This one is organic. Um, it promotes milk production, milk flow. It's called liquid gold because it produces liquid gold. Um, but yeah, this one has fenugreek, fennel seeds, anise, licorice root, 
all the good stuff for you. Um, and I noticed that drinking these two have really helped me with producing milk. I know at first I told you guys that I struggled on my Insta story, but now it's finally coming in. Um, in the morning, I get almost nine ounces when I'm pumping and it's like, yes! But it doesn't happen all the time. Like throughout the day, it kind of whittles down. So at least I have a good reserve in the mornings for the rest of the day. Now moving on to non-food items because I found some other really cool things too that I want to share with you guys. Um, I found this Tarte makeup palette. I don't wear much makeup these days really when I film and if I have time when I go out side to run errands i'll throw on a little bit of makeup but pretty much i haven't had time this is as good as it gets but i found this um new limited edition makeup palette by tarte it's called happy girls shine brighter and it has everything like super neutral but unique colors it has these um plain white some a little bit of gold a shimmery pinky color and then this one is my favorite it's called glam girl and it's like a rose gold color which is so beautiful i'll just put it in the middle of my lid and then to accentuate my eyes enhance it i'll use like these darker colors right here and then there's this really nice blush in here that's just kind of like a good rosy flush on my cheeks i'm looking forward to bringing this palette with me when i travel because it's pretty much all the colors i need i don't really put on a lot of makeup um really i just do my eyes and then some blush and eyeliner and eyebrows and that's it that's pretty much my makeup routine um so yeah i highly recommend this i got this at ulta for like 29 dollars and for all of these things that are products i will link them in the description box below Okay, so finally moving on to baby stuff because that's pretty much been my life. The biggest, hands down, most helpful tool that I had this month was this manual breast pump. I actually have an electrical breast pump too, but it broke on me like two weeks into when I was starting to produce milk and I couldn't pump like twice throughout the night. It happened, it broke at like 11 p.m. So no stores were open. I couldn't run out to get anything. So I pretty much just had to like hand express, which was so painful. And my, um, it was just so engorged and full of milk. I couldn't do anything and she wasn't latching yet. So I really had no option other than to just suffer through it. I ended up getting a fever of 100 degrees for like two days. So I'm thinking that I did have mastitis. I'm not sure I never called the doctor I never went in to get antibiotics or anything because I wanted it to just get better naturally and um, I just pumped like crazy the next day at 7 50 Nate ran out as soon as Target opened to get me this manual pump and then I also ordered another electrical pump on Amazon uh, that came later in the day but without this little guy I I would have died. It was so, so, so painful. Um, but from now on, I will bring this and always have it handy with me whenever I travel, because you never know, like this could happen again. Although the good thing is she's finally latching, so that will be my other tool. That'll be like my first tool, and if everything else doesn't work, this guy right here. I really recommend that you guys, if you guys are breastfeeding, any of you guys out there, uh, always have like a backup manual one in case your electrical one breaks down like mine did. Next up is a book that really, really helped me with uh, calming Eresi down. It was so hard for me the first two weeks. She was just crying for no reason at all. I would try to feed her, give her some milk, but she wouldn't take it, checked her diaper, it wasn't wet, so I just really had no idea how to calm her down. So I did some research, I went online to see what tools I can find to help me learn how to handle and calm a baby down, and I ran across this book called The Happiest Baby on the Block. What's really interesting about this book is that he says the first three months of your baby's life is basically and should be considered the fourth trimester. So when animals are born, they are fully mature to go out into the world. For example, like giraffes, right? Like as soon as they're born, they're able to walk and they're able to go about their life um, with their parents because if they don't, they won't survive in the wild. But babies, um, they come out so soon and he says they come out immaturely because their brains are 
too big. They rely on their brain to do the thinking and they can't walk, they can't do anything, they have like natural reflexes to suck and all that stuff, but really they are still immature. So that really resonated with me. So I continued reading and he has like the five S's. We have swaddling, putting her on the side or the stomach, shushing, sucking, and swinging. So with the combination of all five of those, I am finally able to calm her down and sometimes I like to tell Nate that I am the baby whisperer. <laughs> but it's really worked and this book has pretty much helped me with getting some sleep finally at night. I'm able to feed her and get her back in bed in about half an hour. So during those like 3 a.m. feedings, oh, I try to be as efficient as possible. So doing all this has so helped my life. So I highly recommend if you guys have a newborn, um, have one on the way, definitely check this book out. And finally, my favorite and the most important survival tool of all, my sister. She has four kids and sh without her, I have no idea what the heck I would do. She is like a pro. She has um, a seven-year-old, so she pretty much knows everything from having a newborn to having like a kid, a big kid. But she came over when I first had my baby almost every day to help me just clean, make food, teach me how to breastfeed, teach me how to change a diaper, because really I didn't really know how. She even helped me clean up my nursery and just organize on what I needed for my like changing table. Like she put together my diaper bag for me. So thank you, Tram. You are the best. So these are all my May survival favorites. I hope you guys found them helpful if you guys are going through the same situation I am or even just want to try new products. There's just so many things that I have been experiencing in my life and finding and discovering so I really want to share it with you guys. Um, stay tuned for next month. I'm definitely going to be back with more of like a June favorite. It'll be a different theme every month so I'm going to be traveling this month alone so I'm going to miss my baby and my family so much but I will come back and tell you guys what favorite things um, I stumbled upon during that trip so thank you so much for watching be sure to give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe below and if you guys want to see more of my daily vlog life with the baby be sure to subscribe over at my other channel at wild honeysuckle and I will see you guys next Sunday bye she's so sleepy Baby girl sleeps a lot, eats a lot, and she's grown really healthy, and I just love her so much.